Hey there everybody, we are here at Sea Otter Classic 2023 and in this video we're going to take a look at the most interesting bikes uh, in our opinion at the expo. So let's go take a look. Cool, so we're Hudski, uh, we're from San Rafael, California, up in Marin County. We make these flat bar gravel bikes, fully designed by us, full carbon fork, aluminum frame, and it's towed as like the uh, mountain biker's gravel bike basically. This is our Dogler. At 2200 bucks, it is a uh, full 12 speed SLX, SLX brakes, flat mount front and rear, and uh, PW droppers. Next coming months, we got the Dogler uh, kind of a more entry level build. So we're trying to hit the sub $2,000 range, which is great nowadays. Uh, we make a city build with the 29 by twos, Maxxis Ramblers, 700 by fifties. And yeah, they can also fit a 27 five by two six. Flat bar gravel bikes, do you think that's gonna become a thing? I think so, yeah. I, I think it's here to stay. A lot of people have been converting their bikes for something like this. Yeah, I do think like uh, there's a growing like sub trend of ATBs yeah. and these bikes like fit perfectly in, in that uh, niche. Yeah, absolutely. The Outback is a bike that I rode when I first started the channel, and it's just kind of been on my mind ever since. So when they released the blue, I kind of had to jump on it. I got some help building the bike from uh, Fergus with Richie and also from Russ. So if you've seen the build video, this is the prototype of the one shifter. But at least from a rider's perspective, it's been the best in that I've installed it and I just kind of forgot about it. Everything works, uh, the ratchet feels really nice, there's enough friction to hold it there and so I'm not jumping gears or anything like that. So you've got some other cool parts on here, uh, what's your experience been so far with the Grotac? The Grotac mechanical disc brakes are probably the strongest brakes I've ever had <laughs> and that includes hydraulic really? brakes. Uh, I mean they are, they feel like hydraulic brakes in, in how they ride. They, they bite ridiculously strong. Yeah, the build is, uh, you know, this classic blue silver motif going on. Um, admittedly, I kind of went on, you know, trying to make a pretty bike as opposed to functional, but but it's both, right? It's always kind of you have to ride what you like. Brompton T line. It's a 16.1 pound Brompton folding bike. So it's 10 pounds lighter than our standard steel that you guys used to tour around the country. We basically reinvented every millimeter of the bike from front to back. So if I start at the front, we basically have a carbon fork. We have a new wheel set. We have a new hinge clamp set. We have new titanium tubing. We had to re-engineer the sizing of all of the tubing to make it work with titanium because it's more flexible. Probably people who are following you are really informed on bikes, so that won't be news, but some people, you should know, titanium is lighter, but it's also more flexy, so you have to sort of change the tubing. You've also got carbon handlebars, you've got a carbon crank set, wow. you've got a newly redesigned rear frame, and a new gearing system. This is a four-speed cassette-based gearing system. Anyone who's changed a rear tire on a Brompton before knows it was a little funky before. We've cleaned all that up, and actually it's just as easy to change as a regular bike carbon seat post that's got a steel armor on it ah. so we actually use the carbon to keep it super lightweight and then it's like 0.3 millimeters of steel to keep it from uh, wearing apart where it, when it goes up and down and then we've got carbon rails so blah 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 carbon titanium it's super freaking light it is sleek as hell it's awesome so it's a 16 pound bike that can fit a 250 pound rider plus 25 pounds of gear on the front okay, this is uh, the first ever 3D printed full suspension bike made in America. Composite full suspension bike. So it's a thermoplastic frame. This was made in California. This is just a concept bike. It's not for sale. So we did something a little strange where we launched a product that we are not selling. Probably bad for business, but really fun overall. Uh, our product development team, we worked on this for about two years and we became the first company to, to prove that this concept works. It's an example of what the future could be for the world of, of composite manufacturing. Um, it's 3D printed. There's no molds, it's super efficient. The material um, has the potential to be recycled much more easily than traditional carbon fiber, so it's a more environmentally friendly uh, manufacturing process and uh, post-use process too, once the technology gets there. I've played with a little bit of 3D printing uh, at the local library. How big is the, the printer that you guys use to, to build this? <laughs> it's, it's, it's about the size of this booth we're standing really? in right here. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty big one. It's super proprietary with, you know, we, we have a lot, of, we have several 3D printers in our office for, you know, the more traditional type of 3D printing making you know making things to see what they look like to try test fitting and it's incredible what 3d printers can do this is a whole new level of craziness where the print head is printing out actual structural carbon 
right. that turns into a frame that can be ridden. The frame is a brand new production frame that we're going to be launching this year. So all new Geo for our gravel family. We have eight specs of it. But this one in particular is special to us. We had it custom painted by Dustin. He goes by Technar on Instagram. He's out of Utah. And we sent him a ton of inspirational photography from 90s Diamondbacks. So everybody who says their first bike was a Diamondback probably knows early 90s Diamondbacks. And we just had a ton of fun with it. Sent him some photos and some inspiration and he just went to town. So um, our all of our new Honjos, we have five alloy, three carbon. Our suspension correct. So we changed the Geo a lot to make sure that a couple of them could fit a suspension fork like you would see here. A lot of them are fully rigid. So a little bit of a longer top tube, a little bit of a shorter standover, but then um, one alloy and one carbon will each have a suspension fork and then the rest are fully rigid. It's called the uh, Remy Demi. Um, it's kind of our fun city get around bike. Uh, it looks similar to some e-bikes on the market that have 20 inch by three to four inch tires, but kind of what sets Benno apart um, is really the, the design and execution. So uh, it's a sturdy aluminum frame. Uh, you can see points here for rack mounts. So we design the racks and the bags that fit uh, on our bikes. Uh, they're, they have kind of a max load, but they've been tested to kind of go beyond that. Um, so new for this year, this is the Evo 2 of this bike. So aluminum frame, we have a little bit of a smaller tire. It's a 3.6. That's still um, pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> still pretty big, still pretty big. Um, we've got the Bosch system, uh, which is the best system on the market. Great service, don't really have to worry about it. It's kind of seamless in the power delivery. If something goes wrong with the system, their service is top notch. Um, easy to uh, easy to fix and the bike is one size but it's made to fit someone from 410 to 64 so the low limit on the rack is 75 pounds so as it sits right now you can put a yep seat this clicks right in um, and then we also have a jump seat rack which kind of has some pegs and a seat and kind of a hold for like a smaller child kind of within that weight and then you can also put panniers on the uh, on the rack as well. So oh, this under all of the everything on here is a Surly Wednesday frame. Ah, uh, this came off the Baja Divide tra Trail a few days ago. Literally nothing is. These are stinky socks. There's moldy <laughs> tortillas in there. Evan Christensen it, rode it and he went on a reverse trip on the on the trail and he kind of stopped and talked to all the riders who were on the trail as well to get to know them a bit came across 70 different people and of those 70 27 people were on surly bikes in the Baja Divide tra trail so I gotta point out the the uh, chain stay down here so it, it in the middle of nowhere it broke cracked and had it re-welded by some dude in his garage who had a welder and knocked the dust off it used a couple steel nails to help brace it but um, it just goes to show the value of steel if you're going to be out doing some extreme stuff you can get going again and get your bike repaired and it's you know ride hundreds of more miles on it no problem so yeah it's pretty awesome yeah, I love that you always hear about this as like a hypothetical what if situation mm -hmm. and here it happened and it worked you know a lot of other frame materials you'd just be kind of out of luck at that point and your trip pack it up we got to go home now hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on the cool bikes at sea otter classic 2023 be sure to subscribe we've got a ton more videos on accessories and tech as well as some super fun interviews and as always everybody keep the supple side down